and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. In the News is brought to you by the T1D Exchange. The T1D Exchange is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving outcomes for the entire T1D population. Our top story this week, Michigan following California when it comes to exploring, making, and distributing insulin. The governor signed an executive directive this week to establish a Michigan-based insulin manufacturing facility and facilitate the development in conjunction with a partner of a low-cost insulin product for distribution in Michigan. Governor Whitmer already announced a plan to cap insulin costs in her State of the State address in January. Novo Nordisk plans to move forward with its once-a-week insulin ICADEC. Recent studies show it worked as well or better than daily basal insulin, reducing A1C after 52 weeks. These studies involved more than 4,000 adults with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. It's expected Novo will file for regulatory approval in the first half of 2023 in the U.S., Europe, and in China. There is a separate and additional study for people with type 1 looking at weekly insulin ICODEC with mealtime insulin as well, and that's expected to conclude in about six months. Big new study shows that girls tend to have more serious issues with type 1 than boys, These issues include higher blood sugar levels, weight issues, and higher cholesterol. This was a review of 90 previous studies at Amsterdam University Medical Centers. These researchers point out women and girls have typically not received as much attention as study subjects as men, and they say more study is needed, including finding ways to help doctors treat girls with type 1 diabetes differently than boys. An alarming new study says that cases of type 1 worldwide could double by 2040. Tracking has improved in recent years, but type 1 is underrepresented because a lot of countries don't collect data, and the numbers have historically skewed toward North America and Europe. But about 175,000 people worldwide died because of type 1 in 2021, these researchers believe, and up to 70% of the deaths in those under age 25 occurred because the disease was not diagnosed. This study is in the Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology. Which drugs paired with metformin work the best for type 2? A new trial conducted at 36 study centers nationwide with more than 5,000 people. They were separated into three groups that took metformin plus a medicine that increased insulin levels. The fourth group took metformin and a long-acting insulin. The medications the three groups took, here are the brand names, I'll put the generics in the show notes, they were Genuvia, Victoza, or Amaryl. After about five years of follow-up, the researchers found all four drugs improved blood glucose levels when added to metformin. Those taking metformin plus either Victoza or the long-acting insulin achieved and maintained target blood levels for the longest time. The effects of treatment did not differ with age, sex, race, or ethnicity. However, none of the combinations overwhelmingly outperformed the others. These researchers say that's good news because each has its own side effects, so doctors can feel free to prescribe the one that works best for their individual patients. Bit of technology news now, Dexcom's G7 getting a wider rollout, the UK, Ireland, Germany, Austria, and Hong Kong this week, with launches in New Zealand and South Africa in the weeks to come. I will link up the promotional video they released a couple of days ago. No news yet from the US FDA on when the G7 will be approved in the US. I am talking to Dexcom's Senior Director of Global Product Design for Tuesday's podcast episode, the next one coming up. Tandem's T-Connect mobile app is now compatible with the latest iOS operating system on version 2.3 of the T-Connect mobile app. Until this update, you could lose mobile bolus if you updated your phone. Tandem also added a new iPhone and nine new Android devices to their compatibility list, and I will link that up in the show notes. Back to the news in just a moment, but first I want to tell you about the T1D Exchange. You have heard me talk about this. It really does help accelerate the discovery and development of new treatments, and it can change policy, and it can even change insurance decisions. In the past, they've gotten more coverage for blood glucose meter strips using information from the T1D Exchange, Medicare coverage of CGM devices, and the FDA's decision to expand the Dexcom CGM labeling to include finger stick replacement. So they don't work in a vacuum, right? But all of this information that they gather leads to real change. And they don't know what we want unless we tell them. So by sharing your opinion, your experiences, and your information, you really can help advance meaningful T1D treatment care and policy. Your information remains confidential, your participation fully voluntary. Check it out. For more information, go to t1dregistry.org slash Stacey. That is t1dregistry.org slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Back to the news now. And the College Diabetes Network announces a name change. They'll now be known as the Diabetes Link 
The group says this new name reflects a commitment to expand support to the larger young adult diabetes community, whatever type of diabetes they live with, and whether they are in school or in the workforce. The Diabetes Link is the only national organization focuses specifically on people in their teens and 20s. And finally, another zoo animal with a CGM. Tiana is a lemur in New Zealand. The zoo's education officer also has diabetes and recommended the Dexcom for the lemur. Interestingly, though, they aren't using insulin as the treatment here, rather a hypoglycemia medication, and they are altering the lemur's diet. Apparently, lemurs are prone to something more like type 2 diabetes due to some iron issues or if they eat too much sugar, but Tiana's case more resembles type 1. On the podcast next week, Dexcom Senior Director of Global Product Design, we will talk about what goes into designing a completely new product like the G7. He was great to talk to. He lives with type 1 himself. And this past episode is all about how diabetes communities around the world stayed connected during the early days of the pandemic. Listen wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you have found this one. And hey, parents, I've got a webinar coming up this coming week on Halloween. Link is in the show notes and it's all over my social media. I'm going to share all of my experiences with Benny over these almost 16 years. I think we've had 15 Halloweens with type 1 diabetes. What worked, what didn't, and really just kind of give you actionable advice. And we're going to have a lot of fun as well. So sign up for the webinar. If you can't make it exactly on the date, it's October 13th. You can check out the recording, the replay, but you got to register to get that. And that is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Stacey Sims, and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.